The Coxon Effect, Unveiling the Healing Power of Music with Robert Haig Coxon. Here we are, a conversation with world-renowned musician Robert Haig Coxon, where we discover the science behind the Coxon Effect, a phenomenon where music becomes a vehicle for healing and profound change. Learn about the extensive research conducted on Coxon's music and its unique therapeutic properties that have brought about what many term as miracles. As we explore the evolution of consciousness and our journey towards embodying the sacred self, prepare to be moved and transformed by the power of sound. Tune in for an enlightening discussion that combines music, science, and spirituality shedding light on the transformative potential of the coxin effect. Welcome to the Wellness Driven Life Show, where you're about to go on a wellness driven ride. Let me share with you a little bit more about the incredible guests that we have here today. Robert Haig Coxon, a renowned musician from Montreal, Canada, is recognized for his healing music. His musical journey began at two years old, and by 10, he composed his first piece. Influenced by his grandmothers, one of whom introduced him to classical music and another who shared spiritual wisdom. Coxon developed a unique musical style. After studying composition at McGill University, he produced albums like Crystal Silence, gaining popularity for their relaxing and consciousness opening abilities. His music's therapeutic qualities led to extensive research on the coxin effect, a term coined to describe the healing impact of his work. Today, coxin's music represents a powerful blend of music, science, and spirituality. I am so pleased to help welcome Mr. Robert Haig. Coxon, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Great to be here, April. Yeah, it really is. You know, you mentioned at the beginning, uh, in the intro, you were talking about uh, it's music, science, and spirituality. And mm -hmm. for me, they're all the same thing. You know, they're so connected, so, so connected. And when you, you get deeper into uh, the power of music and you get deeper into the sciences, you find that both things are have to be connected with spirituality because that's where the power is. It's it's beyond the power beyond the three D world. That's mm -hmm. how you can get the magic out there, helping people. Well, it couldn't be anything other than right because we are energetic spiritual beings. And Robert, I don't know if you agree, but I always liken music to be the bridge to the soul. Of course, it is. Yeah, it, it's definitely bridge to the soul. Um, I actually have a piece on one of my albums uh, called The Bridge. And I use that when I, I give workshops too. And in the workshops, one, I, we're partway through the day and I realize it's the point where people um, are ready to um, discover who they really are, to connect to their um, sacred self, that's the music I use to bring them into that. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. It truly is the bridge. Mm -hmm. And and you have really been able to give the essence of that to us. And it's so beautiful. Let's 
Let's start by sharing a little bit more about you and your background because Robert, you have been creating this well for a lifetime. And I'd be curious to know a little bit more. I think you began really releasing more of this conscious opening music back in the 80s. And and correct me if I'm wrong with with some of that, but I would love to know more of the history of where you really uh, grounded it states that you learned so much from your grandmothers. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, of course, I had one of my grandmothers had a piano, an old upright piano, and uh, she could play the piano. She actually played quite well, although she only had one lesson in her whole life. Her parents could not afford more than one lesson, and mm -hmm. so she actually, on the kitchen table, she uh, drew out the the keyboard, the notes, the black and white notes uh, on the table, and she would practice pretending she was playing the piano. Um, talk about visualizing eh, to, <laughs> to arrive somewhere. So she was able to play the piano. Uh, but when I was very, very young, I was maybe one and a half, um, even younger than two, where she was showing me how to play pieces on the piano. And I, I was fascinated. I couldn't touch those pedals you know I was sitting up on the high up on the chair but I could play the notes so I started learning to play the piano um, when I was nine she actually it was a sacrifice for her but she said look I'll give you my piano if you take official piano lessons in other words study classical music play like that you know <laughs> and um, so I jumped at it right away. And uh, then I, I studied piano until, until I went to university. And I actually was not going to study music at university. I was going to study graphic arts because I was, when I was 15 years old, I was a, you know, I was a professional graphic artist. And, uh, but something told me, no, you have to, go into the piano and, and so I, I went to university and actually when I got there they s you know I was studying composition they said uh, you don't need to study piano you play piano well enough why don't you take up an orchestral instrument so that you can bathe yourself in orchestral music and so I played trombone through university most people don't know that <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> yeah I played trombone and um so that was great for me because I learned about all the other instruments. And most importantly, by playing the trombone, I learned something that most keyboard players don't really understand, that you learn how to breathe. And in the music, mm -hmm. you know, playing any wind instrument, you have to breathe properly. And so it taught me so much more about how music has to breathe. Even if you're playing it on a keyboard, it still has to breathe. So I went through and studied composition, and when I got out of there, I, uh, I taught, actually, because I ha also had a degree in pedagogy. And so I taught high school band for, I don't know, four or five years, but I was missing the playing. And, mm. you know, people tell you, well, Teaching's a, you know, a steady job. You know, you don't want to just go out there and play music. No, people don't make money at that. But in, I didn't tell people that. But in my mind, it was, yeah, watch me. <laughs> so <laughs> two weeks after I quit the teaching, I became the um, music director for a ten-piece disco band. This was amazing for me, you know, at that age, and uh, I was in my, my mid twenties, I guess, and. Um, I was the one who also had to write all the, the parts, the, the orchestration for all the instruments because we had 10 players there. So I learned a lot there and, and, and I studied also privately for m quite a few years, for, for many years, until the day that I decided I don't want to play other people's music. I want to play mine. Mm. I'm going to quit all that. And I was very successful with performing. And from that day till now, which is I've 30, 37 years 
that I've only played my music on stage. I've only performed my music, except, you know, I might be with another musician and maybe we'll uh, play a bit of his with him, you know, or her. Um, but backing up to when I was six or seven years old, I had another grandmother. She lived in New York City, which was the hotbed for spirituality then, for all the sp the the New Age spiritual teachers. They didn't call it New Age then, but the spiritual teachers. They called it New Thought, actually. And she was studying with them, and she would come up to Montreal on vacation, and she would <coughs> fill my head with all this information, you know, all the weird stuff, all the, the things about uh, her having healed herself three times from cancer and how she did it and, you know, just using the mind to, to create abundance in your life. And so I, I, I learned that part of it. And I never really saw the connection with the music for so many years until I had excruciating back pain where I could not perform on stage. It, it was really so bad. And I went for physiotherapy. I went for shock therapy, all sorts of things. Nothing seemed to work. The mainstream was not helping me. And so I focused and prayed, I guess. The next day I opened up the newspaper and there was an ad there for the Silva method of mind control, personal mind control. And I didn't know anything about this course, but apparently this, uh, at that time, the course was really famous all over the world. And actually, we went and took the course. And it was a whole week long, every evening during the week, and then all day Saturday, all day Sunday. And by the fourth day, th the pain was gone completely in my back, totally. And I noticed they were doing something. They were playing music to help people to relax completely. Mm. And I thought, well, I'm a composer. This, this sounds like real easy to music for me to write. <laughs> and so the, the next year, I decided I just quit performing. I had a, that last job was a three and a half years playing at a hotel. But it was a really wonderful hotel. I, I was probably the highest paid musician in Montreal for, for performing that type of job. I just, from one day to the next, I quit. And I sat down and wrote Crystal Silence, my very first album. And I could see the power of it because we had many, many plants in the room. There was this big, big picture window there with a ledge with filled with plants, flowers, and, you know, different types of plants. And after a week of composing, the plants were not facing the light, which would be outside. They were facing my speakers. And my wife, <laughs> and then she, w she would come in in the morning and say, oh, and she'd turn all the plants around <laughs> so they'd be <laughs> facing, the, facing the, the outdoor light. And within half an hour, they were turned back around. Uh, they were after the music. And w we also had um, an asparagus plant, you know, it was a type of fern. And it was about this big. But after one month, it was this big. It was gigantic. And all because of the effect of the music on the plants. So and Robert, you're saying that you know, if I have your music playing in my house, my house plants are going to love it. Of course. Yeah. They're going to thrive. <laughs> yeah, they're going to thrive. And, and, and I, I, I could tell you a little bit later about some of the experiments we've done with plants. Um, but I want to say about this first album, Crystal Silence, I had a subtitle for it called The Ultimate Relaxation. So in my mind, I was writing music that would help people to relax totally. Mm. I, in my mind, I was not writing healing music. I was just relaxing music. But it, it got out there and it got really famous all across Canada. 
people are apparently going and buying this cassette, buying 10 copies at a time to give to all their friends, you know. And um, I was starting to get uh, feedback. And I remember uh, meeting one woman at, um, uh, I was at um, a health show or something selling, you know, we had a booth there and we were selling these cassettes. And this woman came up to me and she realized I was the one that wrote it and she started crying and she had to tell me her story that uh, she had been diagnosed with uh, throat cancer mm -hmm. and the doctors did all the treatments they could you know the chemo and the radiation those whole things and they at one point they told her we can't do anything more for you in other words you know go home and die she went into a um, a music store. She'd never been in a music store before, but she was drawn to going to this music store. And there was a, a, a bin there or a box with a sign on it that said, Cassettes on Special. She puts her hand in the box, and the universe made it real easy for her. There was only one cassette in there. <laughs> it was Crystal Silence. She didn't <laughs> have to choose. <laughs> and she bought it, and she brought it home, and, and she put it in her cassette player. And in those days, cassette players had a side A and side B. And they would play side A and then side B, side A, side B. It would just keep playing, you know, flipping one side to the other. She put that on. She was in bed. She couldn't eat. She couldn't sleep. She couldn't watch TV. She, could do, she was in total pain. And one night, in the pitch dark, she was in such pain, she asked for help from spirit. And her hand went and pushed the on button in the dark and the cassette started playing and it played for a month, month and a half, I think. After that time, she was, she felt completely healed, but she wasn't going to go back to that hospital because that was the death sentence. She was afraid to go there. So she actually lived in Canada, in Ottawa, and she went all the way to Australia because her brother was a, a, a physician in Australia. And she went there, and he organized for her to have all the tests. They couldn't find any more cancer. Wow. And so she came back and finally met me and, uh, you know, told me this emotional story for me. It was, oh, my God, what am I doing here? I think I have um, a very serious mission. <laughs> and uh, I actually was invited to that hospital to, to speak to the doctors and the patients at one point, which is kind of amazing for you know, yeah, you know, joining the two things together. Um, so that that set that out there, and I realized this music isn't just to relax, but relaxation is maybe the beginning, and maybe it's doing mm -hmm. so much more than relaxing. Yeah. So, you know, I brought out many more albums, and ones that became like the one called Silent Path, that became number one in France for five years. Um, and I started touring with uh, Lee Carroll. He he does channeling. He's um, um, channels Cryon, and I toured the world with him. I've done, I've been like forty countries with him, doing, playing the music while he's doing guided meditations and channeling, and also giving concerts. But um, we went to France. You know, the first time we went to France, there's three thousand people out there in the audience. You know, so. The music has been able to spread out to these people. And I've had the chance to have a lot of research done on the music and creating um, albums like one called Mental Clarity, which is not those beautiful melodies that I'm well known for. This one is one long sound, th three notes. Just continue a holding and holding and holding. But we had a um, specialist, medical research doctor who specializes in retraining the brain. And his partner, she's a um, medical research scientist. And they had all the equipment, you know, to put the electrodes on your head and yep. find out what the brain's actually doing. And so we did a research project with that and brought 35, 36 people into this, this project. We were looking for the actual sound 
that would put people in the alpha state, which is like when lo slowing down your brain frequency. The state you're in when you're in going into meditation or actually going into sleep. And we found, we didn't find this perfect alpha tone or sound. We found the perfect sound to get rid of that chatter. So mm -hmm. any of you out there are having trouble focusing, you know, when you close your eyes and to meditate or even just to relax and you think, oh, where's the dog? Did I turn the stove off? What are the kids doing? You know, y your mind is so busy, but this actually stops that. It gets you incredibly to focus on nothing or yeah. to end up focusing what you need to focus on. The thing about focusing on nothing, it gives you the chance to listen and to listen to guidance. What does your higher self have to say? What, what, what information can come in from the universe or the multiverse that will help me? How can I open up to my intuition? And how can I get to deeper levels of profound relaxation, profound meditation? It, it just opens up a whole new world. Um, people that are doing uh, university degrees, their, their doctorate degree, and they have to do um, a special paper, um, they use that. They use mental clarity, and it just gets them to totally focus. It gets them to be more efficient. In fact, we use it here all night. We play it all night, very softly in the bedroom. Mm. And once I started doing that, whoa, do I sleep more solidly and profoundly? And of course, it, it'll it'll change your dream state too. You know, mm -hmm. it'll bring you the, the the dreams that you need to have. You know, yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's powerful, but. So there's a lot of research been done. Um, children that have attention deficit, you know, the, the, there's a this almost plague of using Ritalin out there. Everywhere, mm. you know, as soon as yep. a, a child can't focus properly, then then get out the Ritalin, you know, wh yeah. which is maybe needed in some cases, but not in all cases, for sure. Because a project was done in, in Romania with children in, um, an orphanage who had total attention deficit. They couldn't listen to, they couldn't play with a toy for more than 30 seconds. And they weren't going anywhere. They were in an orphanage. So they ate there. They slept there. They did their schoolwork there. They did everything there. So they were able to take the silent path and play it nonstop for a month and a half. Everything seems to be a month and a half in this research. It works perfectly. <laughs> And <laughs> after this month and a half, these kids could play f with toys for 30 minutes. And <laughs> there were two children in that group that were autistic, and they had never spoken in their lives. But after that treatment, one of them was speaking. And wow. the, real, the real thing that wowed me was, you see, these children were um, there they had been experiencing war, you know, with a lot of yeah. uh, fighting there. Um, and so they were all traumatized. And one child, he was so traumatized that he spent his whole day hiding under a table. But at the end of a month and a half, this is the kid that became the group leader. So it, the music can open you up to your power. And of course, what the, the silent path, what I feel it, it's radiating as an energy, as a message, is about loving yourself. Mm. And that, that changes so much. When you, when you start loving yourself, everything changes in your life. Because everything you thought you didn't deserve, consciously or unconsciously, that, that's, that's out the window, you know? Because when you love yourself enough, you realize you deserve everything that you need. And 
you start realizing that the things that you really want, that you really want, not not going out and buying junk food. Oh, I gotta get some chips, you know, not that type of thing. But profoundly, what you you the things that you really want are actually a message from the universe, like to go after that. Mm. So I re, you know, it was when after the silver method that I really was conscious that wow, I can take both aspects of my life, the music aspect and the spiritual aspect, and put them together. They're all the same thing. Yeah. One's connected with the other. I remember now, and I, I just remember this today. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm supposed to say it. When I was about 15 years old, I woke up one morning. My parents were off somewhere, but... Uh, I went downstairs into the, the living room and the dining room where the piano was. And it was at sunrise. You know, the whole room was lit up in gold. It was just amazing. And I sat down at the piano and I wrote or I played. I, I didn't actually write. just channeled through the music that for me represented this amazing golden energy of the room of that ex particular experience and uh, and i see now that this was my first uh taste of diving into that profoundness mm -hmm. that is not just the notes but what's really behind the notes what's this magic where does it come from so mm. that that was whoa, you know, and um, of course I don't know what it is now. I I think I recorded it on this little tape recorder thing, but I I, I sort of lost it. It was so years, so many years ago. But I I get I think now more and more profoundly into not just I, I'm of course I know the rules for composing you know the, these chords go to that one this melody should go there that that but the point is to let go and break the rules because when I was in university studying composition they could not tell me how to write a winner how to write a you know a number one hit because every famous piece of music and of course we were studying classical music quite a bit there every famous piece of music sort of followed the rules but broke the rules and went somewhere else um, you know think of a piece like a which is the beginning of the Moonlight Sonata why are why is that piece still famous you know that was written seems like a million years ago you know <laughs> yeah but um what why does it still touch so many people even though that's not the type of music that's necessarily being created right now mm -hmm. and there's a, there's something behind it there's a message in the, that comes through the notes to us and i i honestly think that a, a piece like that affects us because it it affects our DNA. It touches our DNA. It touches at that profound level of the DNA. Um, mm -hmm. I'm into studying and writing music that will help the DNA now. And I remember we did an experiment in, in Mexico in a greenhouse the size of 10 football fields. That's big. It's very big. Yeah, we were working with a government grant on that, and we had we installed ninety six speakers in the greenhouse, and they had to be special speakers because it's very humid in there. So we had ninety six of these speakers hanging from the ceiling, and they were growing uh, um, peppers, you know, those green and red peppers, the bell peppers, for the North American market, and they. W of course, we played the music during the night, and their uh, productivity went up 
23%. They had 23% more uh, bell peppers to sell. But we did a, this other experiment, which was really interesting. When you take a bag of seeds, a big bag of seeds, there are hundreds of thousands of seeds in this bag, and you plant them, they're not all going to grow. They're not all going to germinate. Mm -hmm. Some of them that, that also germinate are not going to make, uh, they're not going to have uh, those bell peppers hanging. You know, they just don't do anything. Uh, so there's sort of what you call the percentage of, of those seeds is like a percentage of death in the bag. And they took a bag of these seeds and spread them out on the floor and <laughs> took the mental clarity CD that I talked about with that long note that sounds like a lot. It's sort of like an aww, you just like that. And they played that for uh, 36 hours, day and a half. They played it to the seeds, you know, and we think, oh, well, seeds don't have ears, you know, you know but they, they vibrate. And then they planted them, and there was a reduction in that, in the, the, the death factor of 53%. Whoa. Which is amazing, you know. And those, se those seeds are expensive, you know, so that, that's, that's the profit for them. So... The thing that we didn't have the um, equipment to to test that, but what my theory is that the music, the frequency, the vibration, the, the information coming through in the music, and I'll talk about information in a second, but coming through is correcting the DNA of the seeds that were not going to germinate because their DNA was off. Oh, that's pretty powerful when you say correcting the DNA. So that's something that is possible, and we have that through oh, science. Oh, of course. We yes. can correct anything. Because uh, there's another thing I do besides music. Music's my main thing, my big thing. But personally, I've been studying Qigong for, I don't even know, 20-something years. Okay, maybe 22, 23 years. And... The thing I've learned with, you know, Qigong is, if you don't know what Qigong is, it, it, most of you know what uh, Tai Chi is, where people are you know, like this, you know. But Qigong is, I'd say, the mother of Tai Chi because it's older. You know, it's 5,000 years old. There's many different types of Qigong, just like there's many types of uh, yoga. You know, you have a Hatha yoga and you have various other yogas. So you have this in Qigong. The one that I've been studying is the one that has been scientifically proven to uh, to cure or make better 90, 93, 94% of all illnesses. And wow. you, you're working with energy. Yeah, right? that, was, that was what I was going to ask you. It's the movement of energy. You're moving energy. The, the, the whole universe is energy. Yes. Okay. And energy, when it becomes condensed, it turns into matter. You see? And and uh, as you can, if you check some of the scientific experiments that were done with the particles, where particles are there, when you look at them, when you're not looking at them, they're not there. You know, they're energy or they're a particle. They're one or the other. And... So at Qigong, what you're doing is bringing in the energy from the universe. This is pure, this energy. And you're replenishing the body. And at the same time, you can release energy from your body, the mm -hmm. energy that is what we call the baggage. You know, we, we all need to cleanse. Um, suppose you have trauma. Suppose you have uh, fear. All those things, they... they they get stored, those energies get stored in different parts of the body, mainly in the organs, but also various other parts. And this is one of the things that can cause uh, disease because mm -hmm. it makes a blockage there. So the energy can't flow. When the energy is flowing, then everything works perfectly. So um, the thing that I learned that, that most people don't even talk about this chi energy or a prana what the indians would call it 
it also contains information. So there's a perfect information going on there. Um, and this is what affects your DNA. This is what affects everything. Um, and I started realizing that there's the Qigong is helping my music because it's helped me understand things. And uh, the music is bringing an energy into the body. So we can vibrate at the right frequency. Each cell can vibrate at the right frequency. Um, I actually have a, a course that I decided to um, put together. And I, th I think we started in June. Um, 1,000 smiles. Actually, we call it 100 smiles now, but we're going to call it 1,000 smiles. <laughs> um, because we're opening it up for when it first started, it was only for uh, a group of Russian people and some English people that were in Bali when I was teaching. But this course, they learn a lot about Qigong, but we're using my music, which, which most Qigong courses, they don't use music. So we're supporting this whole thing with my music. And we're also um, bringing in information about spirituality and about you know, how do you, how do you cleanse your body? How do you get, how do you become the new human? Mm. How do you transform into the new human? Mm. And do that with music, do that with Qigong, and do that with your consciousness, all three together. It's a powerful program, so check it out on my website. Um, we love that. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, you certainly are bringing in, I mean, you're creating a whole new thing. And so I'd be curious what you're going to, what you're going to term this, coin this. And, um, you know, you mentioned the thousand smiles, but I, I feel like it's a whole practice that you're, you're creating, combining both the, you know, historical piece of it that we've had for so long and also with the science fact and, and combining the two with the music to create even more powerful frequencies that we get to emanate because of you know combining yeah. the the music along with the movement and where to move it is you know essential if we want to heal those specific areas of the body yeah definitely and the interesting thing is that um, there was a time until I'd say 15 years ago, maybe pushing it, maybe 20. Before that, you couldn't study very easily. You couldn't go and study Qigong because the masters were very strict on it and they only taught to certain people. Mm. You know, it was a limited thing. And Luckily, my first teacher was, uh, well, she is, she's a 17th generation master. You know, in other words, there's 17 generations of her family who were masters there. And I was very impressed when I started studying with her when I found out that her grandfather, who was the 15th generation master, he died at the age of 152, and his wife at 130. Now, why are we putting limits on who we are and what we can do and what right. we can be, you know, when th these things happen? And the reason why people don't hear about it is because, um, well, Western media is not going to print that. They, <laughs> they, because people won't believe it. And, and we have, and, and those things have been protected too, you know, they don't. When you live to 152, you don't run around advertising, I am 152, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're actually very privileged now. The world is opening up to all these ancient things and yeah. to the, you know, the, the ancient realization that music is powerful. Music's been there for as long as, almost as long as people have been there. And, and it's always been used as a healing tool or a transformational tool or triumph, you know? Wow, now I'm myself master. You know, you can, um, 
there's a piece that I use, orchestral piece that I wrote um, about uh, called um, Birth of a Warrior. And I use that in, in my Qigong class for them to start feeling, you know, that they're, and it's not the warrior going around killing people, it's the warrior um, going beyond all the barriers that we've set up and becoming a self-master. Not master of everyone else, master yourself first, you know? And then you don't need to master anyone else. Right. Yeah. And yeah. open up with the music, you open up to not just loving yourself, which I talked about earlier, but how about taking that a step further and becoming that love, becoming that happiness, becoming the inner peace. And the real trick on that whole thing is the gratitude. Become that gratitude. You know, there's, there's mm -hmm. so many, and there can be so many layers of gratitude. And the more, the more I progress in my transformation, the more I can see about having gratitude for. Oh, well, Robert, I love everything that you've done. And you're, you've talked so much about really all of the things that you started witnessing with your own music, the plants, mm -hmm. and you know the woman coming up to you and saying how much it, it completely transformed her where there was no more cancer. So you're starting to see all of the healing powers, the transformation with your music, and then leading on to scientific yeah. studies conducted and major yeah. studies conducted and to create the coxin effect. We're going to move into the first commercial. And when we get back, I want to dive a little bit more into the new human and this essence of love and right. being love. So Beautiful. stay tuned. Beautiful. Are you ready to take control of your ride to wellness? Rev up with Driven Living. Visit www.drivenliving.com and buckle up for a journey. Get exclusive access to our Wellness Driven Life Show guest portal, where you can dive deep into the minds of our esteemed guests. Sign up for our newsletter and get insider scoops on these distinguished personalities. It's like having a backstage pass to their life-changing wisdom. But that's not all. You'll also receive a free hug. You heard me right, a free hug. An enlightening ebook from the Driven Living team Discover the science-backed benefits of hugging yourself. It's a fill-up for your wellness tank. Because at Driven Living, we believe in fueling your journey to wellness, both physically and psychologically. So what are you waiting for? Visit www.drivenliving.com today. Welcome back, everyone. We are here with the beautiful Robert Haig Coxon discussing all of this incredible, miraculous aspects of music and stepping into how that plays an effect on becoming what we would call the new human or a mirroring effect of the sacred self. And so moving up words into a higher consciousness, which is what I love so much about this show, the main message of really evolving ourselves to higher and higher levels. Now, Robert, we've had some conversations in the past talking a little bit about this, and you describe, you know, levels of consciousness, levels of coherence when we talk about bringing in those frequencies that we're all emanating on a regular basis based on our emotional state, right? So we can we can navigate those with music, fine tune them, but there's also different levels of coherence and different levels of understanding of coherence. So do we wanna dive a little bit into that? Very interesting. Uh, coherence is the big thing. And interestingly, what comes to me is the, the fact that the more coherence you have in your life, the more coherence you need. And you just, it keeps going on and mm -hmm. on to, to 
It's creating the perfection, but we never get to perfection because what is perfection? It's, you know, it's we're just, as we grow, um, the reason why I say that, that we can't get to perfection because we're just delving into going beyond infinity with everything. Mm -hmm. But when you have coherence, the beautiful thing about that is you end up stepping into the synchronicity of the universe. And, you know, we talk about, oh, that person's so lucky, they're so lucky, they're so lucky. No, they know how to step into the, the, um, the timeline or the time space of the universe so that everything seems to happen at the right time and <laughs> not just happen at the right time, but you meet the right people, the right events come, you know, just, it's, it's like you become part of that, the universal puzzle. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're, you're on the outside trying to fit in. But once you become part of that, with your coherence, you fit into the, the it's, it's a malleable puzzle. It's moving like this, you know, like the, the, the Tai Chi movement. But you're also in the flow. You know, we talk about the flow of the universe. That's part of the flow is, is to go with it. It's like the trees are in the flow with the wind, you know. They're not just going to fall over. They're, they're moving in the wind. So uh, this is what opening up to coherence. And what, it, what does that mean, you know, coherence? Um, does it mean being a good boy or a good girl? Not really. It means being in alignment with your, which I call sacred self. Some people are going to call the soul level. Some people are going to call your higher self, um, your inner self. But for me, I honor it by saying it's your sacred self. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to become a mirror image of that, you know. Um, of what your ideals are, what what um, what things help you to feel that inner peace and to identify as being pure love and this mm -hmm. joy, this happiness. What are the things? And also, what happens is you start realizing why you're here. And it's being coherent with your, um, why you're supposed to be here to, what your mission is. You know, you have to have coherence with that. And, and that needs to be your main focus. And the interesting thing is that, and the struggle for so many people, uh, especially from the Christian world, where we've been, um, taught, not just by Christianity, but by just by society, I should say, right? That's a better way of, oh, well, you have to think of the other people. You always have to think, you know, I remember as a child, you know, uh, um, my parents were very concerned what other people would think. And I think that whole generation before mm. me was like that. And uh, there's still a lot of that out there. I gotta say, Robert, it's trickled into mine too. Very, very much so, the yeah. societal standards. And, and, and I remember 15 years old and I'm, I'm going out on a, one of my first dates, you know, with a girl and my father said, where's your tie? And I'm thinking, oh God, I can't wear a tie. This is, the girl's gonna, won't even want to be with me, you know, <laughs> or, or telling me, you know, you need a haircut. You, you're starting to look like a mushroom, you know, <laughs> and things like that. And that's a, you know, that, that whole uh, idea of, what others will think, I had to go beyond that as a composer of music, you yeah. know? And, and, and it's not like, oh, I have to write the music that people think I should be writing. If I'd done that, I wouldn't be where I am. You know, I'd be like every, all the other writers that wrote that stuff. Uh, yeah. That wrote so-called new age music, you know? Um, it's 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 not about not respecting what other people think, but if you if you are in coherence with who you really are, you don't even have to worry about that because it I takes was, care you know, of itself. 
I was just going to ask you that because Robert, in my mind and my opinion is that that's exactly what you just said is when you're in living in coherence, you just show up miraculously, beautifully, professionally, yes. like, yeah, I don't know if those are the best words, but you know, you appear like you're glowing and like, look, I mean, I, you know, just to show your background, I mean, you look stunning you know you're very professional you're very kept you're you care about your physical well-being and it and it emanates and it shows so i think that it's not about that you you don't care but it but but you don't have to when when you're in this alignment yeah. when you're co-creating with the universe yeah that, that that's totally right um it reminds me of um two weeks ago um, one of my, well, it, with my uh, Qigong teacher, the master in China that I studied with online, uh, one of the students asked him about uh, healing work. Well, how about you don't talk about the yin and yang? And that's very, very oriental. That's very Chinese. That's part of Chinese medicine. And he said, yes, but we work on a, a higher level than the 3D where the problem is. Mm. And uh, and when we work on the highest level and it, it all trickles down, everything's taken care of. You don't have to think of yin and yang. You don't have to think of being in balance because it automatically happens if you're up at that level where the coherence is. You know, you yeah. think of it sort of like a, a pyramid. Consciousness is a pyramid. This is 3D consciousness and we have left and right. Uh, good and bad, uh, male, female, you know, just everything has its opposites. And, you know, even sick and not sick. But when you go up to this level, and you don't even think of getting healed or healthy, just being transforming who you are into mm -hmm. who you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You get up to this top of the pyramid, there's no left and right. There's just that point there. It's the point of rebirth. It's the point of, of who you always really were on a more profound level, at a soul level. And you're reflecting this. And, and, and it's like you're creating that light, bringing that light into every aspect of every level of your life that is below the l level of totality, of oneness. That's the point where if you can get to that, you can, this stops all wars because when you're at that point, you're recognizing everyone else as you're all the same. You're all one. We're all one. We're yeah. just this gigantic oneness. And, and yet you don't obtain or reach that or know that even have the understanding and knowing of until you do that inner work yeah. yourself. But the, the, the music the music can bring you to those levels. Mm. Not all music can, obviously. It's not made for that. You know, I, I write film scores. <laughs> They're not necessarily going to enlighten you. <laughs> but I, I, s I do, whenever I do that, I still put some enlightenment stuff in it. Just to, so people are watching that, that movie or, or program and it's, it's helping them even though they don't realize it, you know, because music can be sort of sneaky like that. It can help you when you don't realize it just because, ah, oh, the music feels good. Yeah, but why does it feel good, you know? Mm, mm. Well, and like you said, it's what's, it's not the note, it's what's behind the note. It, exactly, exactly. And it, my, um, my goal in writing the music, one of the goals is to becoming more and more of a pure channel for that information to come through that I put down as notes, you know? But yeah. th there's so much more than just the notes there. Yeah, wow. so much more. Well, Robert, you are, you've done so much on in the world and now you're doing the thousand smile i'm gonna go ahead and call it thousand smile since you did but on your website it yeah is. we're changing the title 
And, uh, you know, I would be interested to know because you, you're very passionate about serving the world and helping rise global consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so what is the most exciting thing for you next? What are you most excited about? For me and what I'm doing? Yes. Um, the symphonic writing I'm doing now. So that that's how, you know, symphonic orchestra playing it. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's an exciting thing for me. You're dealing with 70 musicians. You know, you're writing for 70 people there, you know, yeah. or 80 people. Um, or a small orchestra, maybe 40 or 50. But, but the power of that, you know, it's, yeah. And I think moving more and more into bringing through the music that will help us transform into the new human changing our consciousness we have to do something here you know the with this planet you know we and we cannot you can never fix something even einstein said that you can't fix a problem on the level that the problem is you have to go above it and i've, I've always understood that all since i was 12 years old that you have to go you have to bring your consciousness above something and be the observer of that and not be the emotionally evolved with that. Rise above it. Become the observer. Rise above that. Become the observer of the observer, you know? And you're, you're then you're tapping into infinite wisdom. And that's what the the music I write can help you to tap into your infinite wisdom. You can bring through anything you want. You can be whatever you want. But you have to connect to that level to do it. Mm. And then, then you're not uh, doing something. You're being something. Being. Not I think you mentioned that the the uh, the one of the first times that I learned about you and your work was by watching the movie The Field or the documentary, mm -hmm. which was recommended to me by Dr. Roland McCready with the Heart Math Institute. Yeah. And so you mentioned that uh, story about your experience. You said this is going back. You did mention it, but you were playing in these hotels. You were very dissatisfied about, you know, just playing the local tunes, what everybody wanted to hear, but that wasn't really tapping into what you offered the world and the creative self. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you had an experience with a tree in your front yard. Do you mind sharing that? Oh, briefly? yeah. I sometimes tell that story at the end, at the very end of my workshops, <laughs> we had this gigantic maple tree. It was, you know, big, like, really really gigantic and i was at that time playing at the hotel you know it was a fantastic job for that type of thing i was doing and i came home one night i was really depressed because you know what do i do what from here i go to another hotel and another hotel and you know that there there has to be more and i hugged this gigantic maple tree and i asked the tree how did you ever become so powerful, so tall, so beautiful, so majestic? And the tree, I actually heard it with my ears. This wasn't like, oh, I got a thought, you know, in my head, an idea. No, I heard with my ears. The tree answered me and said, because I never doubted that I was a tree. And I go, oh, my God, I'm doubting. When you, you're, you're doubting who you should be or you don't even know who you should be, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> open up to who you should be and don't doubt it. Be that, um, like in Kung Fu Panda there, you know, be become <laughs> the, <laughs> the warrior, you know. Um, yeah, that, that was powerful for me. Yeah. And so, yeah. I, you know, at one point I, I, I was teaching people to um, manifest their dreams. And I'm sitting down with one of my daughters. Uh, this was a few years ago. She was like 13. And she says, so, Daddy, what are you teaching now? 
in your workshops, your music workshops. And I said, well, I'm teaching people um, how to manifest their dreams. And she looked at me and said, you got it all wrong. You're not supposed to manifest the dream. You're supposed to become your dream. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? <Wise. You> know? <laughs> yeah. I've learned so much from my from my daughters, you know, they're just so powerful on that level and so honest, you know, tell you the truth, you know. And, and since then, I've been actually understanding that totally. And yeah, not even teaching. I want to work on the level now where I'm the example. Yeah. You know, you can be teaching something that you want to learn, but at the same time, be the example of what you're teaching. Oh, so powerful. I think that is definitely the greatest gift that we can be. I mean, that's self-transformation in and of itself is to, yeah. like you talked about, to be and and just you know allow that to to take place and of course for all of us it's easier said than done because we're trapped in these bodies of wanting to control the experience and the environment and and all of that but yes. as a parent i think going into being a parent that's a, a beautiful example of you know letting go of the control of and the best thing as a parent you can do is to lead yeah. by example and stretch that out for everyone involved in your world yeah yeah definitely and um with children you know being the example for them it may not reflect right away you know so going there's there can be a, a ton of challenges but you see that later i know my my daughters now you know they're out in the world they're professionals doing amazing things and i'm seeing where they, they have opened up, you know? And and earlier you think, oh God, what are they gonna be doing? You know, when they're old? No, but they do open up. If you're the example, yeah. If you're the, you mm. know, and and we, we're all there to teach, but not to teach. We're just there to be the example. Ah. And you can't, you can't change someone else. You can't, tell them what to do and right. the, the big thing is you know s when people get into uh being awakened with spirituality they get so excited and go, oh i gotta i gotta they gotta do the same thing no they don't gotta do the same thing they don't have to do the same thing as you it's their path it's their time um the nice thing with the music it's not like telling people okay you gotta do this no they listen to the music and it affects them on another level. It just yeah. opens them up without them knowing. It's not saying this music's going to help you do that. And then you say, I don't want to do that. You know, um, it just when you're ready, the music will do it. The music will be the catalyst. See, the <laughs> see, the music's not really th the thing that heals. The music is the catalyst because you do your own healing. But the music, when you're ready, the music helps you to open up to that part of you that says, yes, I'm <laughs> not that anymore. I'm now this. And then the, the healing happens. And this, you know, I was saying that, oh, many of these things take a month and a half. No. On stage, I'm playing and people have magical transformations instantly. Now, Robert, you've had numerous performances in front of mass crowds of people. Mm -hmm. Do you see and sense more of a transformation when there's many combines, that collective piece of when many of us gather and, and there's, there's more transformation that acquires because the frequencies are all kind of doing the same thing or maybe there's more intention for yeah, the more people there are, the, the more powerful it can be, you know, when there's a few thousand people there and and their the music just it just makes changes the whole in the room, you know. It's it just 
there's an energy that changes as soon as the music's on. And interestingly, you can play the music in a room, and people that are sensitive to it. I've, I've heard this from friends of mine. One of my dear friends who's an amazing healer told me this story, that she, she plays Crystal Silence, my very first album. She plays that in a room, and then turn, you know, the music stops, and then a little while later, she's telling me that uh, she's had friends come in a little while later, and they say, you were just playing Crystal Silence? You know, they could, they knew that energy, and the energy's still there, you know? It's, it's, um, it's a long-term, how it changes the atmosphere in the room. So it resonates. I had a question for you, uh, Robert, something that I thought about that I never thought about before, but does it make a difference in how the music is uh, taken in? You know, whether we're wearing earphones, whether we have it playing on our stereo, or whether it's a live concert with, with live instruments. Is, is there a big difference in how those frequencies are met with our bodies? Well, um, the acoustic scientist, John Stuart Reed, who, who was actually in the movie The One Field, and you've got to watch that movie. Um, he has talked about, not in the movie, but other times when I've done experiments with him, we, we chat, you know. Um, and with if you have this type of headphone that I'm wearing, not the, not the earbuds, but the actual big headphones, mm -hmm. what that's doing is vibrating the, you know that little part of the ear that sticks out that if you push it in it closes your ear you know the little this, the, this yeah. little piece yeah yeah um yeah the vagus nerve is attached to that connected with that so what you're doing when you're listening to the music with the headphones it's affecting the vagus nerve which goes to every organ of the body you know mm. so something's happening there so watch out what your music <laughs> you're listening to um, of course, when you have the music in the room, every cell of your body is bathing in that, that frequency. Right. Yeah. And live, live music, it's, let's say for me as, as a pianist, I have this, this keyboard right here, is, this is an electronic keyboard, but it has a piano touch, like like a grand piano would. Um, my, when I'm really playing in the groove, it's because I'm being one with the piano. Mm -hmm. It's easier to become one with an amazing grand piano than with an electronic one, but I never use that as an excuse. Mm. So I still become one with the piano because what we're doing we're doing this together like co-creating yeah and we're co-creating with the universe but me also being one with the piano um if the piano works well then wow you know there's there's one piano in montreal at a um, piano store it's a uh, like 120 dollars a uh, hundred and twenty thousand dollar piano um he doesn't even want to sell Steinways. These things are, it's a kawaii. Like like this one I have here is a kawaii. I have three of them here. Um, and when I sit down and play that piano, it's a handmade piano. It's like, I don't even have to play it. I just put my hands there and it just plays. <laughs> you know, it's, it's totally <laughs> it's like amazing. It's so <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and of course, live instruments. Yeah, because you're also getting the interpretation of the moment you know if I'm channeling a piece on stage for someone or for the whole audience there what's coming through is the music ex that is exactly needed at that moment for those people mm. if we're thinking of a, a time frame you know uh, it's coming from outside the time frame to um, to assist within that time frame, that time emotional frame. So mm -hmm. that, that, that can be very m even more powerful than listening to the recording. 
because it's for it's in the moment you know right yeah wow thank you so much for explaining that i was very curious to know your thoughts on it Mm. robert it has been such a wonderful opportunity to have you here on the wellness driven life show i would ask two things of you before we end our time one uh if there's anything else you'd like to share with the audience, please do. And two, if there is something that you're so moved to play for the audience, I would love that. That was so beautiful. Thank you. It moved me, Robert. Yeah, it's supposed to. <laughs> yes, it did. It did its job. It's it a was piece called coming home mm. and what does that mean it's coming home to who you really are yeah yeah right. and yep. that can be emotional because um you know some people think uh some of my music oh that sounds sad no it's not sad it's it's a nostalgia for you missing being home with who you really are yeah, it's entering into that yeah. sacred self. Yeah. yeah. And, and that particular piece, when I play that on stage, that's the piece that is the catalyst for so many healings and magic happening in that audience. That mm. particular piece, more than, more than some others. Well, I, may, I think we might have to end the show because I'm just going to start crying yeah. over here. <laughs> I am yeah. emotionally moved. I, I think it was very beautiful. And I hope that it does the same for our audience. I know that I, I get the pleasure of being here with you right now in this moment, which I know that you said has, a, you know, maybe a more profound effect. But, you know, I just want to make sure that everyone knows where to find you. I have had your website displayed on the screen throughout the show. And for those of you listening in, please visit www.robertcoxon.com. And Robert's website is absolutely stunning, such as himself, as it should be. And you'll find all of the science, the research, the stories, and there are hundreds of stories. And you'll also find the what states 100 miles as of this time, but it will turn into thousand smiles which is an incredible community that you can dive into a couple times a week to to get that powerhouse of what we discussed and robert you want to add to any of this well you can go to my website and uh, you can download you buy downloads of the albums they're all going to help you there's some you know people think my music is oh he, he writes the the slow meditative music well, check out uh, the album called Goddess and the album called um, Passion, Compassion, Alegria. Those are mainly piano albums, and there's some really fast things on there. Um, invigorating, building up your energy. Those are actually, on those two albums, they're all pieces that I channeled for people where they send me their photograph, and I create mm. a soul masterpiece. And... Um, they're invigorating or uh, actually some of them are ones I did on stage, you know, in front of a few thousand people there, bringing someone up and channeling in front of every one of them. Um, there's one that's very sort of virtuosic in there. It, it happened in Spain. So it's that, you know, Spanish piece, of that real ding, 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 Spanish. Uh, mm -hmm. That type of, you know, da, 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 da. invigorating <laughs> yes, is yeah, the yeah. word. Sure. That I got. Yeah. So uh, those are the soul masterpieces. Um, check everything out there. If you if you want to help yourself transform into, if you're having any sort of challenges in your life, use the music. It'll help you. It'll help you build up your confidence. It'll help you. Um, become the real new you, mm -hmm. the one you came here to be. And you can do it. You can be it. We all can. You have that power within you, that limitless power 
and the limitless wisdom to go with it. You have it. Yeah. And if no. you want to end up doing exercises, every two weeks we do that program, the, yeah. the SMILES program. And it's invigorating. The people have been changing incredibly. And the people that are doing it now, there's a lot of Russian and Ukrainian people in there. And imagine how they need it. Yes. But they're going yeah. beyond that. And they're feeling good about it. Yeah. Mm. So Was that uh, part of the drive to, to begin it for uh, specifically for that area? Um, no, the, well, the reason why I did it was because I was invited to Bali that to, event. Uh, to be filmed. They wanted to create a documentary on me and not just on my music, but on my uh, spiritual knowledge coming through. And they said, well, do the Qigong too. <laughs> I said, I, I don't teach Qigong. I do Qigong. <laughs> so <laughs> that's when I started. That was my first, you know, other than teaching my friends, you know. So I, I went there and there was a, a group of, it was for a, a group of Russian people. It was all done in Russian. And um, I had a translator. And uh, the person organizing it is um, Alexander Menchikov. He's, he's very, very well known in the Russian community and uh, hundreds of thousands of followers. And um, he met me in uh, Moscow probably 12 years ago. And that day changed his life. He, he's been teaching and sharing using my music exclusively all that time because he, he really, for him, that's the one that works. That's the yeah. best one. And so he was the one that invited me there. And after uh, we did filming for two weeks and all the people that were part of it, you know, the audience that was with it, they say, well, what do we do now? You know, I got home and they're, they're sending, uh, sending emails asking, well, where can we learn some more? So I decided, well, put this program together. So we have fun every two weeks, and and we're actually doing one this Thursday. Uh, every it's every Thursday, and um, they love it. And they just yeah. some of them are just so dedicated, you know. They they practice and practice, and they they have the music, and they have you know everything. And we touch all sorts of things, you know. This week, probably going to touch on um, getting rid of guilt. Oh, guilt. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I'd say 95% of the people in the world don't know that they have these feelings of guilt in there that are holding mm. them back. So that, that's, that's one of the things. And, and, and mm. we use music to get rid of that, to, yeah. you know, to, to, to offload it. And we use Qigong movements and, and, and consciousness things, meditation, you know, whatever. Whatever comes out. Yeah. I can see how that could become very addictive where you want to continue to learn more, be involved and and see the what's next, you know, especially as you move through yeah. certain energies of emotions and, you know, really healing deep rooted stuff that you are totally unaware of. Oh, yeah. And and every week that I'm I'm doing this, I'm drawing from my experience in that last week or two weeks. Well, what happened to me? What, what did I learn there? Let's share this. Mm. You know, this explains how we can go from here to here and, and change this and do that and how we can suddenly be prosperous in this part of our, our life and in that part and our relationships grow and, you know, so you name it, we work on it. <laughs> uh. Robert, you are such a light in the world. Thank you so much for honoring us on well, the Wellness Driven Life Show. I want to thank you for what you're doing. You know, you're doing an amazing job here. You're bringing people in and, and getting the message out yeah. to everyone that needs it. Yeah, so I honor what you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me here. Great honor. Thank you.
You're welcome. Uh, well, thank you again. Thank you so much for all of you tuning in. You can always find the guest information in the description below. Join the Thursday groups with Robert Coxon. Purchase his music and heal and transform yourself. This is one of those avenues that you get to take while being on this journey called life and towards your greater evolution. So thank you so much. The show wouldn't be possible without you. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye for now. And we will see you next time.